Hey guys, what's up? I'm Marcus Chronicle here. Just before this video starts, I just want to say uh, thank you all for watching this video. I and I loved uh, making all the ones I made this year, but this is going to be the last one I do for the year. I'll be starting back up in January. I don't know when because my content is going to slow down a little bit because I want to make longer and better content. And hopefully... I just recorded the audio for this review right now. I'm hoping that that's going to be the start of this longer content. Uh, I've changed up the format just a little bit to go a little more in depth. And I'm hoping it's going to make the content longer and better. So if you like this video and like the way this uh, video is set up, please uh, like it and tell me in the comments below. And um, yeah, Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching. And uh, I can't wait to see what we do in the next year. So, on with the review. It's Christmas once again, so let's take a look at another episode of My Little Pony. The episode A Heartwarming Tale is a parody of the Charles Dickens story A Christmas Carol. I find this episode to be an interesting one because unlike every other Christmas Carol adaptation I've seen, this one tells a story very similar but almost entirely different to A Christmas Carol. So we start off the episode with a song. The lyrics are nice, but what tells the song are the visuals from the first shot of the town where everything is covered in snow and Christmas lights to how Twilight's castle has been decorated for their party with every column covered with lights and ribbons and every door with wreaths hanging above them. One of the things that's kind of impressive about the song number is how quick everything is. While I've seen animation with more moving parts, this minute and a half is a definite spectacle with setting things up. I can also see this set of lyrics being every animator's credo. So after the song is done, we see Starlight looking over the festivities. Twilight comes along asking if Starlight is ready for her first heartwarming before Starlight commits blasphemy. I was thinking I might just skip it. <gasps> so after the intro, Twilight and Spike try to convince Starlight to join them. Heartwarming is about more than presents and candy. Just an excuse for silly songs and fun. Not a day to remember some old story. Maybe you just haven't heard the right Hearthswarming Eve story yet. Earth ponies, Pegasi, and unicorns sing songs around a hearth to fight back an eternal winter caused by the mythical Windigos. Well, that's a good way to sum up an entire episode. So Twilight reads Starlight A Hearthswarming Tale, the story of a unicorn who hates the holidays. Our stand-in for the character is a Scrooge-like Starlight. Returning is her cult hairstyle along with uh, new glasses and a jacket. We see Snowfall Frost breaking one of the rules of alchemy, trying to turn what appears to be a regular stone into gold when the sound of a bell distracts her and she drops the stone, causing it to break. We then meet Snow Dash, Snowfall's assistant. I'm not too keen on her design in this. While not the worst, there's just something about her hair that throws me off. After a comment by Snow Dash, Snowfall gives us her idea of how everyone should act. Work hard, learn, and use your skills to better Equestria. That's a worthy goal for any pony. But by all means, if you want to go home early, then the right. We follow this up with our second song of the episode. While it is nice all the music in this episode is, I once again have to give the visuals more praise. It could be that we are in a more English city and many of the characters have interesting designs from their varying clothing, or maybe it's because of how Blaine Snowfall is channeling the Grinch and stealing all the decorations and presents she happens by. Hey, goodbye to the holiday. With my magic, I'll erase it. After you say goodbye to the holiday. So Snowfall casts a spell to get rid of the holidays. I really love this idea because every other story is just a retelling of the Christmas Carol with very few variations. I hate the holidays! You don't say. Well, bah humduck. Bah humduck? I like that. Bah humduck. This one follows the format of A Christmas Carol, but makes smart deviations from the story to give it more of an identity from the other variations, instead of being A Christmas Carol with pastel ponies. Starlight to Out of the Story questions the motivations of Snowfall Frost, claiming it's a little extreme, and then Spike gets an offhanded comment. Says the pony who tried to make every pony the same by replacing their cutie marks with equal signs. Ah, uh, snarky Spike, we never had enough of him. I 
think what Spike is trying to say is that every pony has their reasons for doing things. So, very quickly after Snowfall's song, we meet the first spear of Heart Soaring Past. This one is played by Applejack, definitely a good pick. Her design might be my favorite, if not that, it's the second spirit. But Applejack's design is rather cute with her braided mane that had to end the snowflake pattern on her dress. She's also the only spirit that's transparent, which I don't know why I just put this together on my third time watching this episode. Without some powerful forces noticing, you've got our attention, Snowfall Frost. I love how casually Applejack walks through Snowfall. On top of that, my question for this scene is, why didn't any spirits speak to Starlight before the Season 5 opening or finale? Is it because Twilight and Friends exists, or, did, or they did and Starlight just ignored them? So Applejack kidnaps Snowfall and forcibly pulls her out a window, leading into the next song. I love this song. It's the first one that the lyrics are far nicer than the visuals that are matched with them. Anyway, we get a break in the song to see Snowfall's old defense against the dark arts teacher breaking uh, Snowfall's love of the holiday. Spend your time learning to become a powerful unicorn. Or play with your toys and make nothing of yourself. In some distress, words so careless, feeling helpless, you can't make it hurt less. We grow up so fast, some hurts never go away. We see Snowfall awaken back in her workshop where she meets the Spirit of Heart's Warming Sugar Coma played by Pinkie Pie, another good choice. Her design is rather simple with just a yellow robe and candy, and I'm assuming frosting in her mane, but I do like it. So Pinkie introduces herself, and I love how quickly Snowfall is done with her antics. It's how they telegraph her annoyance with just the movement of her eyes. If you're kind of watching the episode and not paying attention, then you'll miss it. So Pinkie tries to explain that the holiday isn't about the presents, but about what they mean. And then we get our next song. This one is one of the best songs visually and lyrically. Everything is just so upbeat that you can't help but get drawn in. Immediately after the song, we get to see Twilight doing her Pinkie Pie voice and get this knowing look from Starlight. That is the exact look I would give one of my friends if uh, they accidentally impersonated another one of my friends while telling a story. I'm gonna say how Starlight subtly asks Twilight to continue the story without seeming too interested is also a little cute. So back in the story, we get to see Snow Dash, Flutter, Holly, and Mary talking about Snowfall. Everyone boosts Snowfall's ideas about the holiday and Flutter Holly states that their, that their party looks like a perfect equestria. I'm gonna say the rating system kinda sucks. How awesome would it have been to see Pinkie Pie age to dust and turn into a skeleton here? Too bad it's going to be the last one ever! 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 Anyway, we see the final spirit played by Princess Luna and she sings our next song. The song easily has the best lyrics and some of the best visuals with the dancing ponies made from magic and the wendigos that appear. I am a little torn on the song in general though. While I do like the song and it's sung well with probably the best lyrics in the episode, I'm a little torn because in the original story and every adaptation I've seen, the Ghost of Christmas future doesn't speak, letting the true horror of Scrooge's eventual death become a much darker reality. However, if I could change this part to have Luna be silent, I wouldn't. I don't think you could tell everything needed for this segment in the two minutes this episode had to wrap up the story and have Snowfall change her ways. Even then, the two minutes they had wasn't nearly enough for the story. For the three songs we get with the spirits, I would have to say that two of them are too short while one of them is too long. I don't know, Applejack's song just feels a little too fast paced while Pinky's song is a little too slow paced. Maybe it's because Applejack's song is supposed to touch on that nostalgic feeling people get making it feel longer, but they don't quite do that. And Pinky's song, well, 
has Pink by singing it so they can do a much more fast paced uh, song to get a little bit more time in the episode. Luna's song is clearly too short. It's supposed to be the most impactful song showing how Snowfall's actions will cause the world to be in a worse place. If she succeeds in her goal, others will die and the world will be covered in a blanket of winter so thick no one could survive. If anything were to change, I would give another minute to the future of hearts warming yet to come. To help draw out the realization of what Snowfall is doing and wrong, and I would have changed up the opening to keep Luna a little more silent and have Snowfall put together that she's the spirit um, of uh, future hearts warmings, and only have Luna start talking after Snowfall asks if she's there to show her the future hearts warmings yet to come. Anyway, Snowfall learns a lesson that the spirits were trying to teach her and shows up at the party that we saw earlier. Twilight finishes the story and passive-aggressively invites Starlight to the party. Loki, I can't wait Starlight had bailed anyway, but of course she joins and we get a quick song to finish off the episode. Heart's warming Eve is filled with presents, some take you by surprise. Do just let go of the past, enjoy the present while it lasts. Out of every Christmas episode this show gave us, this might be my favorite. Either this one or the best gift ever, the hour-long special I did last Christmas. If I had to choose, I would probably choose this uh, episode because uh, the music in this episode is fantastic, even though I do have my minor problems with some of the songs. And the visuals are amazing. They just scream Christmas. This episode gets a 7 out of 10. I would have given it an 8 or 9 if the episode had more time to use. It probably should have been an hour-long special. 